Hey everyone, so here I am with today's Five Live. Don't want the light coming out my head, so I'm going to move slightly. So, oh, 10 minutes late, so I'm so busy at the moment, it just seems hard to um, keep up with everything. But anyway, better late than never. So I promised you that what I would do today is to go back to a couple of the videos that I did recently, which were all about um, the effect of the narcissistic parent. Hello, thanks very much for joining. Um, and the reason I wanted to go back to this is because um, I think I said to you, yeah, keep the loves and the likes coming. It encourages me. So, but I hope what I share is relevant anyway. So I wanted to go back to what I'd been talking to about, about the effects of narcissism and um, the narcissistic parent in particular, because obviously what I always hope is that um, what I share is relevant and that it really helps someone. Yeah, now I'm getting flooded. Okay, thank you. Um, I really hope it helps someone. And what actually happened was after I did those couple of videos, um, I had someone contact me. Um, and she contacted me and she's given me permission to share all of this, which is really nice because so often with my clients, what they're going through is very personal um, and I can't really share many details. But she was so excited about working with me and what we achieved together that she said, if it will help other people, just share everything. So I'm not going to reveal her name or anything, but what I can do is talk about this case study. So I've written down all the notes that I took Took when I was working with her in the session we did and what I what it actually means is that rather than looking at the theory um, what we've got here we've got someone who came to me I've got everything that I uncovered about what she thought and felt so this is her words this is what we discovered together and then how we overcame them so I thought this is just brilliant to share because I think sometimes especially when um, with the trauma of abuse a lot of the people that I see, you you kind of, some of you will relate to this, you almost feel bad about feeling so bad. You're trying to negate what happened to you and say, well, surely I shouldn't be feeling like this. This all happened a long time ago. Um, it, and don't minimize your trauma. Don't, don't try to apologize for the incredibly debilitating effect that this has. Um, it's okay to say that you're affected. It's okay to say, this is what happened to me and I feel terrible and my whole system is disrupted. Um, it's okay. And I just thought, I'll go through this case study and you can see exactly when what went on here. And um, I'm sure that you'll relate to a lot of this um, in a big way. So this um, this person that came to see me um, in their, in their mid-20s, didn't really know until they saw my video was the first inkling they'd had. And it amazes me how often this happens, that people come and talk to me. They have their initial talk to me and they really they they really don't want to be blaming their past. Um, they you know, they, they don't want to be blaming someone. So they're kind of protecting someone in the background at great cost to themselves. So we started talking and what they said to me was, I'm having real trouble with all of my relationships. Now, this is always interesting for me because obviously I don't advertise myself as a relationship coach or counselor or anything like that. But I do get to deal with a lot of relationship issues because obviously who we are, who we bring to our relationship um, has a really big effect on everything. Sorry, my notes on the on that case of falling over here but uh might as well just hold them falling over okay um so she started talking to me and it was really because she'd seen my videos that she started to think that maybe her mother had something to do with how she was feeling so now i'm never going to lead a client Okay, I want a client to talk to me about what they think is wrong. It's true that the subconscious mind, the, the conscious mind might not know, and that's okay. We discover it as we go along. But, you know, I don't want to start by saying, oh, do you realize you had a narcissistic parent? And that's why. So I let her do the talking, and this is what she came up with. Okay, I'm actually going to tell you what she said to me. 
So she started off by saying that um, she's in her mid-20s. She said, I'm having um, extreme difficulty with all of my relationships. So, that, so I said to her, well, what exactly does that mean? So it means I'm afraid to love properly. Well, that means lots of different things to different people. So we need to drill down again. So I always get rejected. Okay, in what way do you always get rejected? Well, I feel that I can't trust that what someone says is true. Now, that's a really big, that's a big thing there, trust in the relationship. Okay, so where does that come from? Okay, so then she has to think about this. Okay, it comes from knowing that in the past, whenever anything nice has been said to me, there is an agenda to it. I always end up losing in the end. Or the person who has said something nice, they either don't mean it and they immediately retract it with something horrible or they don't mean it and they do something horrible later. So what it actually set up in her was a fear response, literally, where whenever someone said something nice to her, she was on the defense. She felt traumatized hearing something nice about herself because her experience told her that this was going to be followed by something really, really unpleasant. Um, and, a, a, you know, that's just a horrible way to live. So she went on to expand on this. She said, OK, so because of this, I'm always overanalyzing absolutely everything, looking for an alternative meaning and wondering what the outcome is going to be. So most of us, if someone says something nice to us, we just accept it. We're grateful for the compliment. It makes us feel good. She actually had trauma around this. She had trauma around being told nice things. Okay, so I can't accept anything positive. There's always an ulterior motive, so I look for it. So she's constantly looking to see what does this person really mean? What might happen from here? Why did they say that? You know, so then she went on to say, because I'm so afraid of what people really think about me, I'm getting to the point where I prefer to stay at home. She's only in her mid-20s and I'm avoiding people, situations, social situations more and more. I'm seeing less and less people and doing less and less things. Because if someone says anything to me, anything, I feel I have to defend myself. And I'm afraid because it gets to the point where I can't control my anger. I'm in a constant defense mode, even when I'm not being attacked. So she could see that even when she wasn't being attacked, because she had learned that things were not as they appear, she was in this defense mode, this traumatized defense mode all the time. So then she went on to say, so, so we broke this down a bit further. And what she had was a fear of not being perfect because her experience had told her what this leads to. And she said, I hate everything about myself. So this was someone that when I asked her to write down, you know, or, or to think about some really good points about herself and all the bad things as well, some of the bad things, the things she thought were bad, she couldn't do it. She couldn't actually come up with anything positive because she didn't believe any of them. She just didn't believe anything good about herself at all. Um, so then she went on to say, uh, so because I'm so bad, now this is a big word as well, I'm going to come back to this, because I'm so bad, I don't think that I deserve love. So I can't have relationships. Do you see this? As, imagine this as the foundation, the foundation that you're going into your day with. 
all of this defending and believing that you don't deserve love and that people are constantly attacking you and that what people say isn't true, what people say about you, they must have an ulterior motive. And I'm sure any of you who have had any experience of narcissism at all or listen to my any any of my training on narcissism or abuse, emotional abuse, you understand absolutely where this is coming from and the damage that it has done. So, um, yeah, I think that's what I've, I've covered it. So there's a couple of themes coming up here that I've spoken about a lot recently. So one of them is that word deserve. So remember, we said I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of people who are self-sabotaging the good things in their life, which is exactly what she's doing in her relationships. Um, every time someone comes along that seems to love her, that likes her, wants to be with her, she's assuming she doesn't really deserve it or that this is going to all turn around and be taken away from her. So we've got this big word deserve and self-sabotage. They've been really big themes for me lately. But then we've also got this word bad. Whenever I hear this word, I know that this is young childhood parental abuse. I'm so bad. So that was her rundown. And this word bad, very interesting word, because what I can do with this word is I always are glad when people come up with this word, because then I'm able to say to them, well, what did you do that was so bad? Let's look at this. You were a child and you were constantly told that you were bad. So you don't believe anything good about yourself. What did you do? Thank you. Yeah, see, some of you will relate to this. Some of you have had this in your background and you know exactly. I've worked with a few people recently um, who had fairly extreme anxiety. And this word bad, this, this word was running through the whole thing. But when we break it down and we look at it normally in childhood, when you are told you are bad repeatedly so that you get this message that you're bad, you know, you would you would think you needed to be in prison on death row the way some of you feel about yourselves, literally. But this is how you've been made to feel. So this word bad, when I say to someone, so what did you do that was so bad? Um, and they'll think and think and say, I was noisy, I made a mess, I didn't always do what I was told. And here's the really telling thing. Now think about this, if you're a young child, let's say between two and 10, between two and 10, being noisy, making a mess, not doing exactly as you're told, you know, this is all age appropriate stuff. As parents, this is what comes with being parents. Yes, it can be frustrating, it can be annoying, but it's not bad. It's age appropriate. You're just being a child. And then I'm able to say, well, this is interesting because in the logical mind, I say to people, okay, so you weren't bad. You were just a child. You were just age appropriate. And then almost without fail, it doesn't matter what kind of abuse we're talking about, sexual, emotional, or physical, they will come back to me and say, but I must have been, otherwise, why did this happen to me? That is invariably the next question. And this is, this is a great move because then we can actually go into the hypnosis and we can show, I can show them very clearly that they weren't bad, that was just their parents were inappropriate, they didn't know how to parent, they didn't love, nurture and support them, and they were not bad. And it is there when we uncover this that they change their feelings about themselves and they can see, oh, I wasn't bad, I was just a child. Okay, I was just six, I was being noisy, I'd made a mess, I wasn't bad. And they'll look at it and go, no, of course I wasn't bad. And it is this focus, shifting this focus from being bad. Um, that this seems to be a very, very significant word. The shifting this focus from being bad to understanding that it's just child appropriate and that they're not that child anymore. But this whole shift around, so you're not bad, are you? And this is where we go with this. Listen to this. This is, this is very, very simple. So you're not bad, are you? No, I can see that I, wasn't, that I wasn't bad. And you're not bad now as an adult, are you? No. 
So you don't deserve all the things that you're punishing yourself with, do you? And they'll kind of stop and hopefully smile or laugh at something, say, no, I guess not. Well, let's think about this. If you're punishing yourself and you believe all this stuff about you because you were so bad and now you can see that you're not bad, you don't deserve any of this bad, nasty, horrible stuff, do you? No, exactly. I mean, the the therapy around it is more involved than this, but I'm just telling you where it goes so you can see. You can see the effect and you can see how we work through it and we change it in the subconscious mind. It takes much longer, obviously, if we just use the conscious mind. Okay, so then I say, okay, so as the adult that you are today, if you're not bad, as you thought you were, what are you? And this is where people will start to see themselves. And even in this case study, even this girl, the relief, the relief when I was, it was almost like taking away from her the burden of knowing that she was bad. That's how she put it. She's like, oh, you've taken that burden away. It's like a huge burden has lifted. Okay, so now that that burden has gone, the burden of thinking you're bad, who are you? What are you? And they start to see themselves as they are. Well, I'm really kind. I'm caring. I'm generous. And this is where we get to, I'm lovable. I deserve to be loved. Okay, why do you deserve to be loved? I deserve to be loved because underneath all this, I'm kind, I'm caring, I'm generous, I care about people, I'm funny. And we get people to start to see who they really are outside of this perception that they were bad, which is so, so damaging. But you can understand that, and obviously as a child, if you are unfortunately in the care of a narcissistic parent and you are never allowed to be right, um, and and that all of your value comes from what you do to the for the parent rather than who you are. They don't love you for who they are. They you have to earn love, and even then, it can never be enough. They will always have a reason why they can't give you the love that you deserve. And the prevalence of this word bad, you know, I I think there were times like this this person I was working with remembered that at three her mother had asked her to put the washing machine on. You know, she was supposed to go and get the washing and put the washing machine on, and she forgot. She got distracted by something. So then all she heard was, oh, you're so bad. You're a bad girl. You're so bad. You know, why don't you pay attention when you listen to me? Um, You're always doing something else. You don't pay attention to me. You don't listen. You're a bad girl. You're so bad. Because she didn't put the washing on at three years old. Do you see these completely unrealistic, this this awful parenting, non-parenting, and the unrealistic expectation that it sets up in the child that they have to be perfect to earn love and that even then they just cannot do enough. They can't be good enough. There's no way around this. So then when they leave that relationship at home and go into their other relationships, that is the blueprint that they take with them. Okay, so I thought I would share that with you, um, how that was a case study that actually came to me, um, how my client with the narcissistic parent felt about themselves, how completely debilitating it was, how there was not, they had nothing positive to say about themselves, but then how we were able to just turn that round in the session. And it's the relieving of this burden of feeling bad it's no good just doing it in the conscious mind. She'd done all that work. She'd, oh my goodness, she'd already had about five years of therapy and she she didn't even know that it was this bad, this word bad that was causing the problem. All she knew was she was sabotaging her relationships and she hated herself. And the reason we can't do this just in the conscious is because in the conscious, you know, 
you know as an adult that you're not bad, but all of this is held in the subconscious mind. And what we have to do is get your your conscious beliefs and desires to match your subconscious ones. And as soon as we release from the subconscious that word bad, and there's lots of um, exercises and therapy that I do in the session around letting it go and releasing it. And honestly, I'll honestly I'll be saying to my client, just release it, let it go, replace it with this. And then I'll say to them, so how do you feel now? And they'll be like, it's gone. It's gone. I feel completely different. OK, so what are we going to fill you up with now? Who are you really? And this is when they'll start to tell themselves. They're telling themselves, not me. They are reparenting themselves. And where we've released that burden around feeling that they're bad, they start to replace those with other words that they can see about themselves. These are the things that they start to acknowledge. And yet, yeah, so there's lots of things we do, sessions, a couple of hours um, but it's these this uncovering and this understanding that is the all important foundation that we start from. So if any of you out there, well, I know that quite a few of you who watch my stuff are unfortunately in the position where you had these very um, these very toxic narcissistic parents. Um, I hope that has at least made you feel that if you feel all of these things, it's okay. I mean, it's not okay in that I wish you didn't feel these things, but number one, it's normal. You can see how this gets created. This is very typical. There, there isn't much variation on this. You know, we don't, I don't talk to adults these days who had narcissistic parents and they only list one or two of these things. This, this is a pattern. This is what happens. It completely undermines and destroys you. So you have no sense of self. This, and But I hope mostly what it's shown you is that you don't have to live like this. Um, it, it, it stops you in all areas of your life. It really does. It holds you back in all of your relationships, um, whether they're intimate relationships, whether they're your friendships. Obviously, they seriously affect your parenting of your own children because you didn't have good role models. They'll very much affect you um, if you're trying to start or run a business and your career. Absolutely every every single thought you have about yourself and every interaction you have with another person comes from this toxic foundation but the good news is that you can change that we we can change this totally and completely for you okay it's not even hard when we uncover the root cause and we can go into the subconscious and just change the way you see yourself the thoughts that you feed yourself and just relieve you of this huge burden of feeling that you are bad unworthy unwanted um, not good enough, unlovable, we can release all of those things. So I hope for some of you who've been struggling with this and are thinking, I can't live the rest of my life like this. What do I ne What do I do next? I hope that gives you some more clarity, gives you some ideas. And by all means, if you want to know more about this and how I deal with this in such a very, such a fast and significant way that is absolutely transformational and life-changing, then please get in touch with me, message me, book into my calendar. I'll leave the link once this is posted and I will see you again tomorrow. If you need to know any more about narcissism, because I've really covered it quite fully now, well, I've done narcissistic parenting. I haven't done a narcissistic spouse, but it's pretty much all the same thing. It's all pretty bad, and we've done a lot on emotional abuse. But if there is a topic that you would particularly like me to cover, please leave that in the comments, and I will certainly look at doing a live for you. And if I can't, I'll let you know, because if, if it's outside my genius zone, if I don't know enough about it, I'm not going to do it for you. Okay, so thank you so much for listening. I really hope that was of some use to you, um, helped you to put some things into some perspective and maybe, maybe just gives you hope that you don't have to live with something that you're living with.